Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland So I'm laughing because I've just seen Andre What he's up to um, Jason, yeah, My name is Jason Newland This is relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes and please subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening to it and uh, maybe like it if you like it and you can also help cover the costs of this free service by going to paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland and the links on the website and all of my 1500 recordings are on my website and link to all the different podcasts that I do so, I should do this to get like a recording of that, shouldn't I? Just post it at the beginning of each 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 recording, each session. Anyway, which I do have the ability to do actually, but I just uh, I'm too lazy. Now, today I want to talk about noise sensitivity or sound <laughs> excessive sound sensitivity but let's use the word noise sensitivity that would be the 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 correct term i think that most people would use or not enjoying noise now i realize this may not apply to everybody that listens to this podcast and so I understand if it's not something you want to listen to in fact you might cry you you might find it too noisy so especially with this little ferret running around for some reason so what I thought I would do is actually open up a bit tell you about my personal experiences with my I guess sensitivity if I use that term sensitivity to noise and although technically you could say well it's got what's that got to do with stress and anxiety it caused stress and anxiety in me and it still sometimes does but less so than it used to so I don't think um, making recordings just about well just to think of anxiety and stress as being something that happens without anything else connected you know, in the sense of maybe a panic attack can, you know, I've had it happen in the past when I was in a bookshop looking at a book and there was no trigger there at all. So if someone was to say to me, which is kind of a, a standard thing for someone to say, something like, well, what's wrong? What's happened? What's caused you to feel that way? What's caused you to have this reaction? What triggered it? When actually there isn't a trigger or not an obvious trigger. You know, it's, I suppose it's a bit in a sense like chronic pain. If someone's got chronic pain, you don't ask them well, what's, what's caused it. If you know that they've got chronic pain, if they've got a shoulder injury that's never, that's healed but not properly healed, you know, in the sense that there's still nerve damage or there's still, you know, it's got ongoing. You kind of accept, well, that's the reason. But, you know, almost, it's like there needs to be a connection, there needs to be a logical explanation. However, life isn't kind of always as simple as that. 
so but there are other times when it is it is a it's a reaction so being sensitive to sound and having loud noises would increase my anxiety a lot you know I'm talking it wasn't just anxiety and stress it was all like anger as well and it's taken me well, it took a long long time for me to go from being able to to be able to get to the point where it doesn't affect me nearly as much that's not to say that if I'm in bed and like today for example downstairs they were drilling there was electricians down there drilling and making a lot of noise and it was shaking my flat I woke up to that and I wasn't I wasn't madly impressed if I'm honest and sitting there watching telly and having that drilling I wasn't enjoying it but I wasn't angry I wasn't fuming I wasn't stressed and I think part of the stress and anxiety came in the past is the anticipation of a noisy neighbour so let's say I had a noisy neighbour that maybe had lots of music loud so when the music was on there'd be stress levels risen I'd get angry but other times when I'd be sitting at home and there'd be no no sound at all, my stress levels would be rising, thinking and expecting the noise to start. And inevitably, well, quite often it did start because someone that's noisy, I don't know, maybe I don't have that there's a sense of consideration that doesn't seem to be within their grasp sometimes is that level maybe in other scenarios that they're they're really sensitive and caring and considerate but some people just think well I'm going to have my television as loud as I want I should be able to play music as loud as I want regardless of how thin the walls are still sound angry don't I but I'm not I'm not you know I kind of accepted it I've lived in enough places to realise you know the ironic thing about this is as I'm making this recording I've got Andre my ferret running around climbing into carrier bags and making way too much noise and it's annoying me And that's kind of funny, isn't it? <laughs> so I'm talking about how you know, noise doesn't really affect me anymore. And I, I half like want to just chuck him out the window. But that's more because it wouldn't bother me if it was just doing that because I'm trying to do a recording. Anyway, he's going to do what he does. He lives here. I'm his lodger. So there you go. Right, back to the recording. So I used to... My first memory of having problems with noise was with my brother. Uh, I was on the top floor of our house my two older brothers were living on the top floor with me um, and my oldest brother was playing music very loud and I kept knocking on his door saying can you turn it down because I had to get up early in the morning to do my paper round I was at school still I was probably 14 then and he was probably about 18 so he'd left school and his reaction was like basically tough 
So, you know, my my reaction was anger. And I wanted to... You know, genuinely, I wanted to hurt him. I did, I wanted to punch him. I didn't, but I wanted to. <laughs> but, because he just... It, more because of his attitude than because of the music. But from then on, I just had a real issue with it wasn't just the music it was the attitude of the people that had the music when I'd complain because ultimately no one likes to be complained to no one likes to be told what to do and what I realised and I've over the years is when you knock on someone's door saying can you maybe turn the music down please they'll say oh sorry and pretty much guaranteed within 20 minutes or 10 minutes even the music will be loud perhaps louder than it was before and you know the amount of times I've heard a conversation repeat afterwards saying how dare he knock on my door Uh, you know sort of so I can't I stopped doing that after a while because it can get a little bit uh, heated But I used to go off, I used to really, really lose it when I'd get disturbed. In fact, I got disturbed when I was disturbed, if that makes sense. And it was the anxiety. It did cause stress in the moment. It caused stress afterwards because I felt guilty for what I'd done or what I'd said. I didn't do anything too bad too often, but... I kind of felt guilty for what I wanted to do. And there was that whole... Trying to kind of even out in my head. Because logically I knew that I was acting... Or overreacting. I mean, you know, really reacting. Overreacting. But emotionally, it didn't make any difference. So when I managed to get logical and managed to calm my mind down, I then felt guilty and felt bad and felt anxious. Partly because I'd gone against what I believed was real, what I believed was the right thing or the right way to act, is to not act with violence or violent words or violent thoughts. And in the same way, not to. I just f- felt guilty, basically. And then there was the anxiety of expecting it to happen again, and it did happen again, over and over again, for years and years and years. So, all the different places I've lived, and it's probably why I've experienced it so much, because I've lived in many 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 different places more than the average and I've moved home I don't know nearly 50 times since I left school so I've lived in lots of different places and experienced different types of people living with them or living in a room in a house sharing a house and there's a place in London where the door kept slamming. All of the doors were almost like, um, they had, I don't know what they were, but they just slammed. They closed on their own, which is a fire door thing when they're supposed to. But just because a door closes on its own and slams doesn't mean you have to let it slam. But, and this is when I was 18 or 19. And I said to the the ladies downstairs, can you stop letting your doors slam? (laughs) No. And I did, I used to punch the wardrobe in the the wall in the room I had. Because I used to get so frustrated. And then I'd be lying in bed thinking, I'm going to get woken up by that. Because sometimes it'd be late at night, I had an early start. 
uh, I'd get woken up by it early in the morning before I had to get up. So that caused a degree of anxiety and stress for me. Another time, even people that I get on with, I struggle a bit when they're noisy. So I lived in a place before moving to London and there was a couple there that got on really well with them. But they loved playing loud opera music, really loud. And I was constantly asking them to turn it down because I had to get up at five o'clock in the morning because I had a little cleaning job that I had to go to. And they just, oh. But I liked them. But it's the whole, I had anxiety from that, not knowing are they going to do it again tonight? Are they gonna, is it going to start up again in an hour? Because they'd be up all night drinking and listening to music. And yeah, my nerves, it just, I was young enough for it not, didn't seem to affect me as much as it would now living in that environment would be a practically impossible for me just the whole constant barrage of loud sound is not although I can deal with loud sounds that happen occasionally I couldn't not constantly I'd have to move so it's that's that's one of those things that's one of those situations that happened um, there was a really weird and this is embarrassing I feel a bit well it's kind of embarrassing to really mention it but this is a long 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 time ago uh, back in uh, the 90s so just give you an idea how long ago and the, I got woken up by someone knocking on the door and they were reading the meter. And it was like half seven in the morning or something. And then by the time I got downstairs, they'd, they'd left. And I went out holding a screwdriver, screaming at this person. And again, embarrassing, terrible behaviour, awful. But I, I, it's almost like I lost my mind. It was because I was constantly being woken up where I lived, and and I was I was awake during the night quite often, but getting woken up during the day, which is kind of normal practice. Most people are awake during the day, and. I felt bad about that I'd done worse than that as well later on but that was bad um, luckily I just managed to go inside and calm down the thing is the screwdriver was on the side it was near the phone I didn't sort of grab didn't, didn't have a screwdriver in my bedroom planning to hurt anyone I just ended up looking down and I had a screwdriver in my hand as I was shouting at this bloke and he was being rude back to me which is I suppose fair enough but he was like well I'll do what I want I'll knock on the door whenever I want it was yeah it was quite a difficult thing to deal with and again my stress levels rose I didn't class it as stress back then. I just classed it as feeling really, really tense. Really, really tense. And so I didn't use words like anxiety or stress. Didn't understand what they were. I had no interest. And back then I'd have classed it as weakness. It's true, that's, that's what it was. I would have classed it as weakness what do you mean you're stressed, you're anxious? Even though I'd already been given stress, I'd already been 
put on um, medication for stress in 95. Even after that, I still really, at that time, I don't think I really recognised it. I didn't really take the stress and anxiety seriously until I had the panic attacks in November 2002, when it really kicked in. Before that, even having been diagnosed with stress and having been ill for 10 months prior to that, I didn't take it seriously. I didn't really acknowledge it. But I was affected by it. And looking back to my childhood, I was affected by stress. I was a very stressful child. Um, what I used to do is I'd bottle everything up and then I'd explode, but not angrily, just in tears. And there's a couple of times, I remember one particular time I was, I think it was eight, and I went into the kitchen and my stepmom was in there and she said, what's wrong? And I just burst out crying and I was howling and I didn't know why. I didn't know why. I was at, and she was like, what's wrong, what's wrong? I said, nothing. Nothing had happened. It was just an accumulative um, a build up you know of various just I guess just being a kid and I absolutely exploded there was nothing bad happening at school it was you know everything in fact that's probably one of the best times of my life when I was seven between seven and eight the ha family was a happy family pretty much it was at school you know, everything was nice. It was a really good time. But I just, I don't know what it was. I just built up this stress, which I wouldn't have classed it as stress because I didn't even know what stress was. I had no concept of it at that age. All I knew is it was like a, when my stepmom said, what's wrong? She'd opened, she just, I was... A shaken can of uh, coke or lemonade or something or a shaken bottle and she just undid the lid and I just everywhere it's completely exploded released and I did feel better afterwards so it's a cathartic experience but and very weird though and I remember it I don't remember it like like it was yesterday because clearly it wasn't yesterday. It was forty what well, forty one years ago. So it's a long time ago, but I remember it, and it happened a few times actually, and it still happens. See, I'm telling you stuff that is really personal here. I don't know why, but I know why it's personal, but I don't know why I'm telling you. Um things build up and then I start crying uncontrollably and it's really really rare it happens maybe once every couple of years sometimes it doesn't happen for two or three years but when it happens I just lose it but not emotionally lose it in the sense of not knowing where I am or wanting to do anything bad or anything like that. It's just a complete emptying or release or just just too much stuff in there. And it just pops almost like a fizzy drink that's been shook. And the last time it happened that I remember is... when a friend of mine said something to me and it wasn't even that bad but it was quite cruel actually and I came back up here and I, and I was re I was upset with what I, what was being what had been said to me especially I was trying to do that person a favor trying to help them and they basically just was a bit cruel but not horrible not really badly but just 
dismissive and a bit unkind really but not probably not meaning to be but I just completely lost it and that, this was about three years ago and I never kind of could tell what it was like what it, what was it what was it about why you know what did it compare to until my nan died and the first when my nan was ill uh, before she died she was ill and I think she broke her hip again and she and I, my dad phoned me saying oh your nan's ill I said well I can come and see her can I? and she, his, his attitude was like there's no point which was upsetting to me and I put the phone down and I just lost it and that was and I completely exploded you know a bit like popped like the fizzy drink and that's the first time it happened with uh, for a reason like that I could actually see a reason for it like a proper you know and this is quite a long time ago back in 2013 or something and then my probably the, the last the next time it happened when there I could see a reason was at my nan's funeral and I just lost it again but it made sense then it was grief and it was um, it was a relief a relief a release of those feelings that were kind of clogged up but it felt different because they didn't feel like there was stress involved it felt more natural you know it's grief we're supposed to get upset it's like you know that's what I've always been taught you cry at funerals and all that stuff so it felt natural although I did really blubber really lost it everyone else was composed and I was just I was about to start punching the floor <laughs> it was ridiculous but I um, other times I know I'm, I was talking about noise and sound and sensitivity to loud sound and I will come back to that because I've managed, I've managed to stray off into the territory of built up stress and anxiety so I don't know how many other people maybe have that that have experienced that feeling of just exploding and just you know like a fizzy drink the lid's taken off and all the um, overflow And that, that's part of the reason why when I started making relaxation sessions, you know, back 14 years ago, I started uh, trying to include the idea of an overflow. You know, like with a bath or a sink, so that if it gets too high, the water starts to move out of the bath or the sink. Because there's that hole, isn't there, which is at the top of the sink or I don't know what you call it but it's the, the overflow hole I guess that's what it's called and just in the same way as a toilet a toilet can't overflow because it has a, a mechanism doesn't it so that it can't the water level can't go above a certain level So I tried to include that idea in quite a few of my earlier 
relaxation recordings and almost kind of implant the idea and allow it to be there to automatically work when needed to come to action when required uh, instead of being too explicit with it just rep you know, presenting the idea of the overflow which can then be sort of realise oh yeah that's a good idea actually because then there's less build up in fact it can never build up so I don't know how many people listening to this uh, actually relate to that small child of eight years old that I was completely oblivious to what was going on all I knew was that I was crying uncontrollably and before that I was rigid with I guess tension I didn't have the words but it was tension physical discomfort tense muscles and uh, probably way too much going on in my head and not able or not have didn't have the ability to deal with that stuff so I, I think sometimes with the with the sound with the, the noise sensitized thing being a bit sensitive to noise is when I've lived in places where there's a constant barrage of noise or even intermittent you know it might be every few days it builds up I kind of start getting that build up of stress the, the anxiety the stress of when it happens then the anxiety of will it happen the expectation that it will happen and then the, the worry of what will I do if it does happen because you know I'm, I am a, I'm a, uh, I am officially a moody old git I am officially got a mood disorder and my moods depends what I do depends on my mood um, I'm very controlled not controlling to other people but I'm very able to control what I do uh, much more than I used to be able to and maybe not more than I used to be able to but more than I realised I was able to that's probably a better way of saying it because no one has to wait to be 45 or 49 or 35 in order to be able to make changes it's within everyone from any age it's just sometimes well I definitely didn't believe I was able to not for a long time but then I spent most of my life thinking I was really really thick really stupid unintelligent that's what I believed that's what I was told so I believed it so our beliefs affect what we do and how we act which means maybe it's time to look at some of those beliefs so as far as the sound issues go I'm a lot better than I used to be I don't react as much to background sounds but I've also got coping mechanisms in place for background sounds so if, so if I've got a noisy if I've got a lot of noise going on outside so let's say I don't know the, the lawns uh, we have these hedge trimmers that come around and they spend hours in the garden trimming hedges they just seem to spend hours doing it so I've got headphones that I can put on and listen to music or 
watch a movie, watch Netflix, and I can't hear the I can't hear the head trimmers, the hedge trimmers, when I'm doing that. Other times, I can't just don't care about it. I, I can I get myself into a, a level of uh, thought where I'm not that bothered. I can even lay in bed and fall asleep to that sound which is something that I would never would have been able to do in the past or never not that I never would have been able to but I never knew that I was able to yeah I need to need to the thing is we can I want to stop my I don't just want to stop myself from limiting my future possibilities or limiting what I do now I want to stop limiting what I could have done. It doesn't change the fact of what I did do, but I want to I want to stop limiting the past in a sense of saying well I had no choice, I didn't, you know, I couldn't do anything then. Well, yeah, different circumstances with a bit of knowledge, a bit of education um I may well have been able to do that. I may have been able to be an accountant or a lawyer, different circumstances, but I didn't have those circumstances, didn't have any belief. You know, I didn't go to university till I was 37 and I got my degree when I was 40. You know, it was, I didn't believe I could do that when I was in my 20s. I wanted to. I wanted to believe it, to be honest. It wasn't even a case of I wanted to have a degree. I wanted to believe that I could get a degree, but I didn't, I truly didn't believe it. And if you really, if someone truly doesn't believe something, that is a huge obstacle. That's a, that's a massive, big banana skin in front of you. So, other things I've used over the years to help is earplugs. So, I managed to, I started using earplugs when I was in bed, and it did make a difference. It meant I could sleep, and I didn't hear the background sounds. Maybe I lived near a. I used to live near a busy road, really busy road. That was. There was a quiet period between about two in the morning, and five, and then it got busy again. Lots of lorries, and um, so, yeah, I'd get woken up. I don't mind the sound of traffic, to be honest with you. It's quite soothing now. Didn't back then though. So I used to wear earplugs. And all I would say if you do wear earplugs, don't push them in too far. I want to give you some practical advice there. Don't push them in too far because I did that. And I perforated one of my eardrums, which gave me, uh, I forget what it's called, but basically my um, balance went. So whatever that thing is where you kind of, uh, there's, a, there's a term for it, but my balance went. And I couldn't believe that just a perforated eardrum could do that. So the eardrums are very, very important. So, and I wore earplugs for years and I only perforated my eardrum once. I just pushed it in too far. So just make sure you don't push them in too far, that's all if you do uh, end up wearing earplugs at some point. So for me, that was a practical solution because I couldn't find any other solution. And now I don't wear earplugs. I did when I first, where was I living before? Yeah, I do have earplugs here. So I've always got them in case I need them. I've got 
a big a box of about 30 or something so it's 30 sets so they're there they're in the cupboard if I have a need to wear them they're there so if I have for example today the electricians have been drilling all day if I needed to sleep luckily I I didn't because I slept during the night but if I needed to sleep desperately needed sleep I would put the headphones the ear the earplugs in because that possibly would have been the only thing that I could have done because the noise was too much it wasn't I, the, the sound of drilling isn't I don't find it very therapeutic it's not very <laughs> relaxing um, it's, but that's just me I've also got headphones so loud sounds on a bus I'm sensitive I'm still I'm still sensitive to sound I am I'll admit it I am um, but I'm less reactive does that make sense I don't react aggressively I don't um, I don't feel anxious in the same way expecting to feel uh, unwell because it used to affect me physically I'd feel unwell by it I'd be so tense and just so angry and not able to express myself and yeah it was pretty awful but now I've got these ear, ear headphones and they're really good headphones and they're noise cancelling headphones which means when I've got them on and I'm listening to music I can't hear pretty much anything can't really hear anything going on outside of the headphones so I wear them I wear them when I'm on the bus so that I'm not so I find I know I feel like I should be talking as being having been completely cured of everything and be you know you know like a lot of you know, sometimes read books by people or listen to someone and they, they've got all the answers and they've got all the and they've done it all themselves and they're perfectly well now well I can't, I'm not coming from that perspective which I'm sure you're aware of but some things that I maybe that maybe don't work for me as well may work for others some things that work for other people or don't work for other people might work really well for me so we're all different so I think anything's worth a try so what I do is I have the headphones on because then I can't hear what anyone else is saying and that's nice I like that again it's just a personal thing but I noticed that my stress levels, and I've talked about the headphones before, I think, my stress levels are much lower when I've got the headphones on. And other things you could do, soundproofing. You could soundproof the place. There's different... It, that does that costs money of course but there are ways of changing sometimes it's changing your environment and sometimes it might mean moving I know that's extreme for a lot of people it was never extreme for me I could move with 10 minutes notice I was always ready to move not now but I used to be and I mean, I moved, I'm sure I moved twice in one week. Um, plus, you know, sleeping on people's couches and stuff I, when I was younger as well. But there is, I don't know, there are ways of changing, you know, making changes. I always remember this. Uh, someone I counselled 
and he's had noisy I think he had lots of kids playing outside but they weren't kids but they there was like a playground or a little, little, little field outside where he lived but they were there late at night making loads of noise shouting and screaming and whatever and he was getting really ill with it probably physically ill by the stress and the anxiety and I made a suggestion to him and you know being a counsellor not supposed to really make practical suggestions but I thought well I can relate to what he's saying so I said that to him I can relate to what you're saying um, in a sense of I've had many years of issues with um, noisy neighbours and you know, I've struggled to deal with a lot of loud noise over the years and I told him that I wear earplugs because he was talking about seriously um, doing something really bad and I, and I said to him and he had his house for sale so he put his house up for sale because he couldn't stand living there anymore but in the meantime because the house was taking too long to sell he was talking about doing perhaps the worst thing that he could do so I said look get some earplugs it works for me and he said you know what I never even thought about doing that it's kind of the most obvious thing in the world isn't it when you think about it but not everything that's obvious is obvious wear earplugs but then some people I know some people like this would be so bloody minded so adamant in their own righteousness of being right that they refuse to do anything to help themselves so someone would suffer through it being some kind of a martyr but at the same time getting ill refusing to wear earplugs because why should I have to wear earplugs which is true they shouldn't have to but if it helps even if they're only on a temporary basis if it helps then do it I mean, why, why should anybody ever have to go on dialysis or have a blood transfusion why should anyone ever have to have to have an operation why should anyone have to have diabetes why should anyone have to do anything it's, it's life isn't it we have things happen and if someone's got diabetes they either take the insulin or they die basically I think is kind of the situation uh, an extreme situation but they can say well why should I have to take that you haven't got diabetes you haven't got diabetes no one I know has got diabetes why should I have to take insulin four times a day or whatever it is well, you, the fact is you don't have to but you're going to be very 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 ill if, unless you do it's a choice and people don't like hearing that because it's almost like you can't be a martyr or feel sorry for yourself when you realise it's a choice it's really hard to keep the anger going when you realise that actually it is a choice no one can make you take insulin unless you're in a hospital bed and you're tied down and they're injecting it into you no one can make you take insulin but if you don't you're in trouble you know if if you, if the person was diabetic of course and that's just a a small version of that I mean there's way more serious situations in a sense of if someone needs help and they won't take it they won't accept help 
or they won't do anything to help themselves. So if someone's going through stress and anxiety, financially unable to deal with it, financially having financial problems, but refuse to get help, refuse to get some kind of financial advice, and then they're offered the choice of, well, bankruptcy is the only option, but their pride won't allow it. Well, no one else goes bankrupt, which obviously is not true, but in their mind they might say, well, no one else that I know has gone bankrupt. Why should I go bankrupt? I've worked too long, too hard for this. So they keep going. And... Uh, the thing that I probably don't mention very often, probably because I don't really like to think about it, but stress can lead to illness, physical illness. We all know that. But it can also lead to extreme physical illness where you can't come back from it. And... I think it's, if possible, try not, you know, to everyone, try not to let it get to that point. Again, an obvious statement, but something that probably a lot of people never listen to because of their so-called pride or their wanting to be right, needing to be right refusal to be a loser which is possibly what some people would think it is personally I think if someone's got a business and it doesn't work they're not a loser because they've started a business and they've done everything they can and it hasn't worked because not all businesses work that's the fact because if they did, then, well, it wouldn't work, would it? Because everybody would have a business. And we need other people to be doing other things in society. If everyone had their own business, you know, a successful shop, who would deliver the mail? Who would drive the buses? Who would, you know, do all the things like that? can't believe I'm talking about driving buses now. So you can go for practical help with stress. And as we're talking, you know, before about loud sounds, unnecessary noise. I don't... I used to punch the walls. I used to punch stuff, which is really really bad habit to have really ridiculous silly thing to do because it damages physically damages the person who does it you know amount of time I broke my right hand twice at least twice officially but I think I've probably broken fingers and stuff in the past well, I just couldn't move anything for a few weeks So, I suppose what I'm trying to say, and yep, it's taken a while, is there are ways around things. There are ways to cope and deal with stuff stress-related. It's just finding them finding the ways that are useful for you that work with you that work for you that help you and not everything is going to help everyone you know I did a 
a stress relief exercise using a tennis ball or a, a sock, two socks rolled together. That's going to help some people. Some people think it's ridiculous, wouldn't even try it because I think that's silly. Other people might do it and think it's still silly. Other, other people might do it and get kicked out of the supermarket. I mean, who knows? The thing is, the mentality to open your mind to the possibilities of change, to the poss possibilities of something helping, because there's always going to be something that can help you, always. It's just finding it. That's all it is, just finding it. And as far as the noisy neighbours, stuff like that, learning to relax and be calm is useful. And maybe looking at practical ways to change how you feel, like headphones, earplugs, extreme situation, move, move if you need to, but that's an extreme situation, you know, and it's not for everyone and it's not fair to have to move. But just remember, everything's temporary. And even if someone's making noise, they will stop eventually. And I could go on, there's other experiences I've had, but I won't. Because, you know, I've done some, st I've just, yeah, I've had some silly reactions to loud noises in the past. But that's, that's not me anymore. Anyway, I want to go. I wish you lots of love and remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Bye.